Right now on Up With Krem, after three straight days of record highs, temperatures drop, but only into the 90s, as the long-term outlook remains hot and hazy. Came in as that there were maybe 10 people trapped in the house. A mother and her nine kids are now safe this morning after their home burned down. How the family was able to escape. Plus, a crime spree started downtown, reached Spokane Valley, and ended on the South Hill. This morning, how police put an end to the weekend chase. Up with Crim begins now. Hi everyone, good morning. Happy Thursday to you, or 7-Eleven day. Slurpee day. It is, oh my gosh. <laughs> Get you a Slurpee, it's hot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Speaking of the heat, meteorologist Thomas Patrick is telling us all about it because nobody knows more about this heat That's than he right. does. Yeah, a Slurpee sounds great. Uh, if they come in caffeine form, that would be sure. perfect for the morning hours. Could replace maybe that cup of coffee. But it, otherwise, it's like iced coffee for a morning like this when it is still hot outside. Now, yesterday we hit 104 degrees. It was a record high for the third straight day. It was 100 degrees for the third straight day. It will get cooler today. Technically, uh, it is down about six degrees our temperatures over the last 24 hours, but that will be about all it gets cooler because 104 minus six would be 98. I'm going 97 for today. So still hot, just not record breaking hot for this afternoon. Well, as you are waking up and heading out the door this morning, we're taking a live look at I-90 and Evergreen Road right now. At 601, traffic is moving along rather smoothly at this section of I-90. Of course, we'll continue keeping an eye on other traffic cameras throughout our region. We'll keep you updated on if anything changes. Now, like Thomas was saying, this 90 degree temperatures that we're experiencing will continue for the next several days. So this morning, we're continuing to give you more tips on staying cool during this heat wave and throughout the summer. And there are some simple things you can do right now at home to cool off. A ceiling fan will make you feel cooler because of a wind chill effect, but it won't necessarily lower the temperature of the room. Here's another pro tip. Make sure your fan spins counterclockwise during the summer months so the blades push the cooler air down into the room. You can also set the direction by using a small switch beneath the blades to make that change. And if temperatures do cool down at night, experts recommend opening your windows on opposite sides of your home. This creates a cross breeze, drawing in cooler, fresh air. And fans can even help speed up that process as well. Now this morning, the city of Spokane's cooling centers are still open today for people to go and cool off during this heat. A city code actually says they must open cooling centers when temperatures are forecasted to be 95 degrees or higher for at least two consecutive days. The Spokane libraries are open to help people cool off. This includes the Central Liberty Park, Shadle Park, Hilliard, South Hill, and Indian Trail libraries. There's also more support available at the Trent Resource Center. If you need a ride, Spokane Transit is offering free fare if you are heading to a cooling center. And Kootenai County Emergency Management is also sharing a list of area cooling centers as well. Several libraries are open for people there to go cool down in. This includes the Coeur d'Alene, the Raftrum, Harrison, Hayden, and Spirit Lake libraries. The location hours do vary, so you will want to contact the centers directly for more information. But for more resources, you can visit niservicedirectory.com. Well, you have to see this, the dangerous heat causing roads to buckle. WashDOT says it happened in at least three locations, including right here on US 195, just south of the Horn School rest area. Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones live for us this morning. Brandon, this is crazy to see that the heat can cause these situations. Yeah. What did WashDOT tell you about this and how are they making sure their workers stay safe while they make those repairs? Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Tim. Well, the washout officials, they kind of described it to me as like almost like tectonic plates and it just gets so hot that it ultimately the pressure forces it to pop on up and it sounds like a, a kind of like a miniature explosion one it ends up popping up and then of course we've heard Thomas explain that we're getting somewhat of a break from those triple digit temperatures today but nonetheless the temperatures are still going to be very hot so it's something that washed officials will have to be working around for at least the next few days or so with those 90s in the forecast and so we talked about those bursting panels and then we also talked about kind of how 
how their crews, construction crews, approach this type of heat. So we'll talk about just the guidelines they follow here first. And when temperatures meet or exceed 90 degrees, paid 10 minute breaks are required every two hours. If it's above 100 degrees, that break must be 15 minutes every hour. Sites must also provide enough suitably cool water for each employee to drink at least a quart an hour, and it must be cool enough to encourage that worker stay hydrated. Efficient shade large enough for workers must also be provided or a vehicle with running air conditioning is also acceptable. As for those bursting concrete panels, it was so hot over the last few days, a designated crew was assigned to monitor the roads with a heat gun to keep track of road temperatures in case they needed to respond to more problems on the road. 195 is kind of that spot that we watch continuously for those concrete panels um, that do happen to burst more often just because it is an older section of concrete and due to it being resurfaced so many times that concrete starting to get a bit thinner. So WashDOT told me they will continue monitoring the road conditions. And again, as a reminder, if you see crews out earlier, be safe on the road and give them space to work because we've already actually seen some WashDOT crews out at 5 a.m. driving to whichever particular project or construction site, and that gives them an opportunity to beat some of that heat. But for now, reporting live here in Spokane, Brandon T. Jones from 2 News. The high heat also means high fire danger. A statewide burn ban is now in effect for Washington. The Department of Natural Resources issued it yesterday afternoon. This means burning of any kind on DNR managed land is not allowed. The new order also bans outdoor burning, campfires, and the use of charcoal briquettes. Prescribed burns on all forest lands are not allowed either. DNR says the ban is in effect until September 30th. This follows a burn ban already in place in several cities across Spokane County. This morning, a suspect is in jail in connection to a nearly two hour long crime spree last week. Spokane police say 38 year old Daniel Paws first smashed a rock through a woman's car window and then stole her car. From there, he drove the car out to Spokane Valley near Browns Park. He then reportedly left the stolen car and tried to kidnap a young girl who was playing outside with a friend. Police say that a neighbor was able to rescue the girl as the man tried to drag her away. And finally, just before he was arrested, SPD says the suspect broke into a nearby home, stole a pillowcase full of things and lit a shed on fire. It didn't stop there. Police surrounded the area with canine officers and drones. They arrested Paws, but not before the suspect hit an officer on the head with a rake. He now faces several charges, including first degree kidnapping and second degree assault. At 608, let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. This morning, U.S. Senator Maria Cantwell will hold a committee hearing on artificial intelligence protections. Cantwell will be joined by a tech policy professor from the University of Washington. They'll speak about how AI created a need for federal privacy laws when it comes to businesses and data. The hearing starts any minute. The U.S. Marshal Service is offering a $1,500 reward for help in finding a home invasion suspect. Adam C. John is from Spokane. Now he's suspected of assaulting two people and is considered to be armed and dangerous. The U.S. Marshals and Spokane County Sheriff's Office are now asking anyone with information as to where he could be to call the number there at the bottom of your screen. Hey, get out! Get out? Get out, yes, get out of the trailer! New video this morning shows a Spokane County yeah. Sheriff's deputy going into a burning home to help evacuate the two people inside. This actually happened on Monday morning. The Sheriff's Office says the deputy saw smoke coming from the home as he was just driving by. The Spokane Valley Fire Department did arrive shortly afterwards and put out the fire. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but the home was destroyed. The cause of this fire is still under investigation, though, this morning. That's a look at your morning rush. This morning, we are less than four months away from the general election. This November, Idaho voters will decide if the state should move to an open primary system. The Idaho Secretary of State says the Idahoans for Open Primaries initiative met the requirements to appear on the ballot yesterday. It proposes a nonpartisan primary election where the top four candidates, regardless of party, would advance to the general election. The general election would have instant runoff voting, which is often called ranked choice voting. Voters would choose their top candidate and rank the remaining candidates in order of preference. 
Today, President Joe Biden is giving his first solo news conference in eight months to close out the NATO summit. Reporters will likely question him about his fitness for office after his debate in Atlanta. Now, following Biden's debate performance, many Democrats are calling for him to drop out of the race, despite the president saying that he is staying in. It is 610. We'll take a look at our weather conditions from our outdoor weather center where it is super pleasant right now. In fact, a little bit of a breeze feels great at this hour of the morning and with a slight cold front that passed through yesterday. That's where the wind is coming from and keeping things at least a little bit more temperate this morning. We're at 67 degrees. That's six degrees cooler than at this point yesterday morning, and it will make a difference by this afternoon. Not record breaking heat, just regular July heat for us. 97 degrees, a sunny and hazy day ahead of us. That is going to be very common for the next week or two weeks for the inland northwest. In fact, the seven day forecast is 95 and above every single day. So coming up, I'm going to focus a bit more on those hazy conditions and what wildfires are pouring out the most smoke regionally. So look for that update in just a couple minutes. At 611, it is time for our wake up call. Today is National All American Pet Photo Day. So this morning we are asking to see all of your amazing <laughs> pet photos. Look at these good boys and girls. Oh They're so goodness. cute. I absolutely love these days when we get to share our pet <laughs> photos because we know our viewers love pets and we love pets as well. We've we gotten do. look at it. We've already gotten a cow this morning. We've so that's already exciting. Gotten a cow. I our love seeing the like livestock. All types of animals. Exactly. Like livestock count as pets as well sometimes. Oh, 100%. <laughs> so text us in your your pet photos to 509-448-2000 or post to social media and use the hashtag up with crib. During the heat waves, people tend to feel more agitated. Everyone's mood is impacted by the heat. Well, experts say these scorching temperatures can actually affect your mood. In the next six minutes on up with crib, how to keep the heat from impacting your mood this summer. And at 815 on KSKN 22, Miss Washington USA joins us live in studio. Tiffany Ray is sharing her experience competing in the pageant and how she's preparing for the national stage.